So, fearless predictions. <laughs> um, November, Melbourne Cup Day, rate reduction, rate stay, rate increase. No change. No, no change. change. No change. They- okay. And sec- next fearless prediction, of course, we can't see the money markets at the moment because they wouldn't have actually, they haven't enough time to work on it. I mean, you can get a number, but it won't, won't, be, it won't be sort of full enough. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was going to have a very quick look, if you don't mind, just yeah. see what the bond market's done, if that's okay. Yep. Ah, very little changed. I think the bond market's reacting like we have. Yeah. Headline figure, whew, that's great. Trim to mean, oh, a bit high. So we, we're sitting here with the three-year bond just under 4% compared with the official cash rate of 4.35. So which basically says no real movement. No. So there's a couple of rate cuts over the course of a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, Broadly speaking. No, nothing. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. one rate cut and a bit of a rate cut. <laughs> yes. It's just like that, 0.35. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that's interesting. So um, – and in, so, uh, fearless predictions, because you know um, we've got twenty twenty five coming up. Yep. Um, what do you reckon? Look, I think that once we get into twenty twenty five, we will see the RBA joining the global party, cutting interest rates because we will have inflation trim mean headline, however you want to measure it, in the zone. We'll have the unemployment rate a little bit higher, and we'll have confirmation that even though the economy is probably a little bit better than it is now will still not be booming. It won't be that sort of growth momentum. So we'll see a couple of rate cuts, I think, through through the 2025. course of 2025. Not aggressive. And again, don't get excited. We are not going back to interest rates no. as were during the pandemic. We are talking, I think, a minimum of 50 because they've got to, they can't just go to 125. That won't have any effect. Minimum of 50, probably up to 100 points of rate cuts, so the cash rate goes to 3.35. And if we get a little bit of bad news on the economy or something happens in the US, we might cut a little bit more than that. But that requires a factor out of left field to come and push or force a hand of the RBA lower. It's interesting, you know, um, if they start to reduce rates in, say, February, March next year, it's around seven months later then all the other countries started reducing interest rates, which is equivalent to when we started to put rates up. So we yes. we put rates up around seven months later. Yeah, May 2022 yes. was the first, yeah. and others were hiking in late 21. Yes, yeah, correct. correct. Around seven, eight months, yep. and it's yep. it's sort of like <laughs> nearly like um, patternized and uh, clockwork. Yeah, it's like we just we just were a bit slow yeah. to put them up, and we're going to be a bit slow to put them down. I think that that might be a fair assessment. In a very simple a, way. No, no, that, no, that's a fair assessment. And the Reserve Bank- So our uh, economy has behaved appropriately. So because, you know, like in a scientific sense, like yep. in an yep. economics as a science, yep. um, things tend to behave the same. You know, like it's just like all scientific experiments. They, they tend to behave the same. Yep. Unless you're doing something radically different, which we haven't. We haven't no, done anything no, radically no. different. We, correct. We've done what In the experiment. Like yeah. our our scientific experiment with our economy, which is what everyone does, yeah. um, has been – we've had some small differences but nothing radical um, and it looks like we uh, – like everything, like every every scientific experiment but in an economic sense, we're going to be as – we are as predictable in our behaviour, the economic behaviour, as everybody else. It, it, it seems indeed, that way. It, 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 it seems that way. And in the in the West, Western world, where consumers are the dominant part of each economy, mm. whether you're looking at the UK, the US, Germany, the, yeah, there's slight differences from country to country, but household consumption, household spending is the lion's share of GDP growth. Yep. When we face financial pressure, we consumers are not silly. We cut our spending. Yeah. Happened. It's happening everywhere. So that financial pressure was through the cost of living when inflation went up, and oh my god, the price of everything's gone up so much. Or Interest rate hikes? Or both. Or both. And we had both in Australia. Well, both everywhere in the world, frankly. And now we respond to it. Some people respond a bit more quickly or a bit more slowly, but we're part of that response too. And so it, it, it's it, it's sort of nearly – I mean, I know we – I don't want to um, discount the analysis that we do and that everyone else does around the world, but it's nearly like it's just common sense that we will behave – predictably, like everybody else, if most of the inputs are constant, which in our case it is. And this is a probably a, a topic for another day, but globalisation, we are part of the It makes it much economy. more the case. Yes. So the, the, we mentioned the price of oil, but it's also the price of iPhones, the price of TVs, the price of cars that are made Price in- of Netflix. Everything, price of a car made in Korea. If you drive it in London or in the US or in Australia, 
okay, there's tariffs and a few other bits and bobs. That there, but it's basically the same price. So if the price of a car went up 50%, for example, because the Korean producers put up, everyone would be f- confronting that. Yeah. The price of oil goes up because of a conflict in the Middle East. We all pay that. So the globalisation means that while our economies are different, yes, there's different. We've got lots of mining and uh, the UK doesn't have much mining. You know, um, we, We've got a different structure, but broadly – very broadly, and from us consumers and consumers in the UK and in the US, we react remarkably similarly to all of these things, and that's why. Oh gosh, I wish I could. I wish I had my chart with me. It showed that in the rate hiking cycle, again, the timing was a little bit different, and the orders of hikes were a little bit different. But there's this wonderful colours of I think seven or eight countries. They all went up pretty much together. They all stabilised pretty much together. They're starting to come down a little bit, except us. <laughs> They're starting to come down a little bit. And so when we see this chart in a year's time, for example, all these yellow line for the US, red line for the UK, purple line for Australia, they'll all be coming down. Now, some will be down at three, some will be three and a half, some will be two. Yeah, there'll, there'll be differences, but if you just eyeball the chart, which I love doing, you'll see everyone's confronting lower inflation, weaker growth, Inflation hitting people's targets, so whether that's the Fed in the US or Bank of England or the Reserve Bank of Australia, yep, we can trim rates a bit. Because, you know, like what consumers can take away from, by the way, I don't want to take ourselves out of a job, <laughs> but what consumers can take out of this is, as you just said, um, pretty much we're all the same. Like most of the countries adopt yep. a two, 2% yep. uh, inflation number or somewhere between 2 and 3, we're between 2 and 3, but a lot of them actually are dead on 2. We're all pretty much the same. You know, like it's, it's half. Just, yeah, we're two and a half. Others are two. Some use the personal consumption deflator. It's basically two to two and a half ish yeah. percent. Yep, yep. And 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 uh, whilst the numbers are different per country, and and that actually does have some impact in terms of speed at which change can occur because yes. the momentum can create a, a, a bigger speed, a faster speed. Yep. Um, Australia just pretty much follows the behaviour of everybody else. Yep. Now, as I'm not trying to take the your job away or my job no, no. away <laughs> or our podcast away, but it sort of seems that way. And globalisation yep. has helped that, or, or it, 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 globalisation is underpinned. It's, it's underpinned. It it. Yeah, yep, t- yep. totally. And, and it continues to do more so. than it's ever done before. Correct, and and as time goes on, it's going to be much be more, much more close. And even international airfares, you know, they're, they're the same. There's no book, arbitrage. Whether you book a flight from yeah Sydney to London and back to Sydney in London, or you do it here, it's the yeah. same price. You used to be able to arbitrage these things, but, <laughs> you can't, but you can't now. But the airlines are smart. Yeah, well, you know, they've, they've got around that every, little every, trick. <laughs> everybody, where we could sort of make. We could sort of um, play differences. They've worked out the arbitrage. It's a bit like trying to beat the casino. The global, yep. the global um, economy yep. has worked out all the tricks, yep. and everything's really much Remarkably more smooth, similar. smoothed out. The only thing that can make it change a lot is if your currency, be it the euro, the yen, the British pound, or the Aussie dollar, does a big gyration for some reason or another. But it has to be an extreme an exo- it, has be, it has to be a really big move just in the Aussie dollar or ha- just in the British pound. But that has to be exogenous because. Yes. We're all trading with each other, and the things that sort of tend to change the the dollar could be interest rates or could be commodity prices in our case. Yeah, yeah. But because it's a global number, um, it's not moving around too Correct. much. And uh, so it seems Correct. to me like yep. <laughs> you know the rest of the world's going to be all, all same same. Uh, just yep. timing will be different. It's just timing and slight orders of magnitude. Yeah. To put it this way, direction will be that we're all going in the same direction. Yeah, it's just a matter of who's a bit faster. And who starts a bit earlier, who ends a bit later. That's so, what we're talking about. Well, Cookie, that's great because we can actually take comfort right now anyway as, we, as you and I sit here that the world is heading in the right globally, the, the, the countries that we can be comparative with um, are heading in the right direction for us to get an interest rate reduction and how many is a different matter, but sure. an interest rate reduction at some some stage in, in the near future, 2025. In, in the not too distant future and the interesting thing is that the Reserve Bank will acknowledge that. Yeah. They haven't yet. They might next week. And if they don't next week, they will in the December meeting. So we're almost there. And I, 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 you'll hear a sigh of relief around mortgage holders and small business for that matter who have overdrafts that it might not be today, but we can see some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of the rate cuts coming through. Do, do we have a December meeting? There is a December meeting, yes. So, so we're November. Uh, oh. There's sort of this funny one. They get one out before the end of the year and then they don't meet again. So there's still no January meeting. And I, if I remember correctly, I think it's the 6th of February. So there's one about the 9th or 10th of December, if I remember correctly. And then there's another one on the 
And finally, do, and finally, do you think um, the um, Reserve Bank Governor is going to publish the vote of all uh, the members? She said she might. I, I would find that very, very interesting Me to too. see who- uh, Who's dovish and who's bullish. Yeah, and who's Hawkish. got a different view because, again, look, we're discussing, we know what our The US mates, does. Uh, yeah, they do publish it and yeah. so does the UK. Yep. And as we have here, and okay, we're not RBA members, unfortunately, but, you know, a Warren Hogan or a Christopher Joy or a me or a, or a Shane Oliver or, you know, we have different views on interest. We all look at the same data, you know. Yeah. We, we look at pretty much and have a different judgment. The nine members of the RBA board do the same thing. They think, oh, gee, I think, you know, we're overstating the importance of this or understating the importance of that. And that's where the healthy debate comes in. I think a conflict, if everyone's 100% in agreement, it's very boring. If someone challenges you and say, hey, Mark, I reckon we're, we're going to hike rates. Oh, why are you saying that, mate? And you have a debate that hopefully leads to a better outcome. Well, when they're all sitting around next Tuesday um, having a cup of tea in Lamingtons <laughs> and uh, holding hands and singing Kumbaya, I'll guarantee that they will take this segment of our discussion with your board and they'll place it up on their big screen and they'll say, this is what Kukulis and Boris have put together, and no doubt they'll be in total agreement with us. I'm sure they do. I'll have a chat to both uh, Michelle and Andrew Howes, the Deputy Governor, and say, guys, pop this up. You don't need any more than that. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thanks, Mark. <laughs>